Hey, what's up, Dean? Seer Performance back at the shop. You can see Jeff's trucks in the background. Um, we got a lot done on it. Pretty much everything is done on it. This morning, well, uh, yesterday I did a bunch of stuff. Um, but I got the new alternator on. That's working. Um, coolant lines, like the crossover lines that go on the intake are all done. Uh, and I did them in a PTFE Teflon braided line. So those came out good. I like them. Then this is what I did this morning. Um, I had these 90s here. And that coupling, I just ordered a piece of pipe. This piece of pipe. Um, and this thermostat housing, this is a like a Spectre swivel one. Um, with the old thermostat housing, it actually hit the fitting. So I literally couldn't put the fitting on. And then I was debating do like a threaded 90, you know, an AN threaded 90 and put it over there. And I, I have one in a smaller size. And even that, the nut on the fitting would still hit. So I decided instead of trying to finagle this somehow, we'll get these lines to match. Um, they're just straight fittings in every corner with a 90 in every corner. So you could literally take the hoses off, turn them around. You could probably flop them side to side. Not sure that one is longer than the other. Um, so I ordered this. It, it's fairly cheap. And I ordered this piece of pipe. I didn't have any more. This piece is what I had left, like maybe two inches longer than what's in there. So I got that on with the T-clamps all bolted in. That looks a lot better than his like weird factory hose that was on there. I don't even know where it is. It's on the shelf. Um, in the other video, the headlights are all done. I also, I don't know if I mentioned it. I got to tape all this up. But I left this wire here. This is the low beam. And I left it really long and then heat shrinked it over on itself. Because if, if he wanted to add in like an LED or something to come on with the headlights then he can wire it right into this um, and then just ground it to the chassis so that worked out good I'm gonna move the recovery tank to the other side there's no point in having it over here the dash is still in we did all that I also finished oh I got the cap on and the rollover vent is in there. You can see there's like a Teflon washer under it. So I had to take the tank all the way back out, drain it, cut the AN fitting off. It's in the bucket. Um, I had to cut the AN fitting off the tank and clean the top of the tank up and then drill it a little bit bigger. The bottom half is like a block and it has a hole in it. And then there's a steel ball, like a stainless ball that goes up and down. And then this threaded fitting on the bottom of it, it's almost like a female flare. So the ball seats in that flare if ever the truck was to roll over. Um, so that's all in and tight. And then I just took a piece of 10 AN with a 90, stuck it through. That I thought would have been 180 degree, but that's too far away because I thought I was originally getting like a thread on one that would have threaded on like the fitting on top of the tank. And it would have been tall enough to do like a 180 and stick it down there. But yeah, I jumped the gun on that one a little bit. Um, I got his box with all his stuff. This is the cam card. This is the dashboard bolt. This is all the extra nitrous fittings. I put them in a little case for them. And what I did was, you can see the barcodes are in there, but it gives them all the jet sizes that he has. So that's a 57, that's a 63, 33, so on and so forth, all the way down to a 19, which I believe the, yeah, the 19 is in there on the fuel side. Because it's fuel injected, has a higher pressure you need a lot smaller of a nitrous jet so we got all that done um, 
side panels done front bumper done let me get it in the air and I'll show you a couple of things I did underneath okay so underneath I actually took the shifter cable that was routed over because I put his shield back on well I put it on he got that with the first power glide um, but with it you can see the hole for the cable to come to this side was really binding the cable so I took it out and I fed it over and then looped it back I got the P clamps on right here they're holding the transmission lines the battery cable battery cable and then there's the relay with a fuse that I zip tied so that he has access to it for the transmission fan cooler fan so this green wire I actually ran up you see it goes all the way up and then it shoots up the firewall and it goes to the holly um, harness to the fan two. So output number two is what that one is connected to. Um, this way we can set an on off temperature for this fan. It's based off of the engine temperature, but I took and I lowered it to like I think I set it to 130 or 140. So this fan, I think it might be 140. This will come on when the coolant temp of the engine hits 140. It'll kick this fan on. And then when the engine temp is 130, this fan kicks back off. So it doesn't work off transmission temperature, but it should work just as good. Um, being that I set it really low to the point where he won't really be driving the truck at 130 degrees, maybe just cruising it. Um, so he shouldn't have an issue of like heating the transmission fluid way, way up. Um, and that's pretty much it for down here. That's the rollover vent. Comes under and then I, I put a piece of heat shrink just so it doesn't blow the braid apart. Um, so that goes under his fuel level sensor. It's been hooked up. So it is wired all the way up to the front. Um, I got some zip ties to put on. I also, which now I'm gonna have to get the ladder. Oh, the ladder's there. You can't see, I mean, you can barely see up in the corners. Um, there are two small LEDs. So we'll shut the light off. And you can see without my flash, it's pretty dark in here. Um, there are like janky skylights. But if we take the old parking lights, that's all we'll go on is the parking lights. Ooh. So there, parking lights are on. There's no headlights on, uh, even though it kind of looks like there is, but that's the other skylight. But you can see the bulb in front of the tires lit up in the inner fender. You can see the tail lights are lit up and he's got two license plate lights. So, and they're pretty bright. Um, they work good, you know, and they're, they're hidden and stuff. So that's good. And basically all I did was drill a hole in the fiberglass and then I those kind of shove in or like push in bulbs so they almost have a taper to them so as the farther they go in the tighter they get uh, but being that this is fiberglass I went ahead and put like um, like an epoxy behind it and it also like covered up the bulb like how you can see there's it's really not lighting up through the bulb it's lighting up through the fiberglass because the bulb is so bright. And I did that on both sides. Prior to me putting that stuff, like the bulb like shined out. You can kind of see there's a little, little spot of it. Um, but they work really, really good. Let me get the light back on. So yeah, so Jeff's truck is pretty much done. Uh, I got to put water in it. 
I've had the radiator draining. It's it's empty now. Um, so I just got to add the water into it. Oh, yeah, that's the side marker light. So this bulb goes all the way up to the fender. I'll leave it hanging down. That one's not on because like either the socket or the bulb is bad. I think this one, the bulb is bad because if I switch the bulbs, this one will light up. Um, so yeah, drop it down. Put the lug nuts back on. There it is, back on the ground. So now, and it hasn't hasn't ran since early yesterday, but we'll kill the parking lights. Key on. And we'll wait for the dash to come up. Well, Oh yeah, there it goes. So the coolant's at 96 right now. Um, it's at 96 degrees. The intake temp's 82. That's the top of the throttle body just because it has free air above it. So. right off um, it needs a little bit of uh, like a fuel adjustment like cold start adjustment um, I haven't really gotten any of that but um, yeah I mean runs very good super responsive too um, which is good the timing I actually verified the timing and it was like six degrees off uh, roughly so I got that adjusted. It's spot on now. Everything is good. Um, and I got his radiators fairly cleaned out from the mucky water oil mix. Um, so, old Jeffrey. Uh, I talked to him last night. He was gonna try to kind of pop up here today he wants to get the airbag off of my truck uh, that I have outside and try and get the cover on there um, and then maybe get the dash painted so that we we can get the dash in completely installed and done for him but I mean the only thing he'll have left this truck is complete um, it is 100% drivable once he gets the windows put back in it. Uh, he's taking it to paint. So once he gets the paint done, I mean, he can literally drive this truck around, no problems, go to car shows, car meets, whatever, track. 
Um, and the only the only other thing that will be addressed, not that it needs to be addressed, but to completely optimize everything with this truck, what it is, you know, the, the small block, the power glide, it'd be his rear end. Um, this is a stock seven and a half inch ring gear, I believe, I, or it's the 8.2. I'm not hundred percent. I think it's seven and a half, but it's the, basically a stock rear end with a posi unit. And from the MSD transmission controller that we had prior, calculating the speed in there going off of like a phone GPS app and driving down the road and watching the speedometer on the MSD with what he had thought was a 373 gear is what he was told is in the truck the speedometer was way off like 20 something mile an hour off I don't remember exactly what it was so I kept lowering it I went from a 373 I went to a 355 I went to a 323 like all the common numbers in my head that I could think of and the most common stock gear is a 308 so once I put the 308 in my phone and the MSD were within a mile an hour and they would trickle back and forth between matching and being plus a mile an hour minus a mile an hour um, so that tells me that this is a 308 gear which is not good, especially with the power glide. So if he wanted to run eighth mile, he'd be high fours, low fives, probably a uh, quarter mile, and probably a 355 gear would work really, really good. Maybe a 373. So it's something he's thinking about. Uh, we've been talking back and forth about it possibly doing like a Ford 88 out of an Explorer. They're relatively inexpensive. They come 373, 411. They come posi or well, limited slip, uh, which is posi. Um, and their parts for them are, are cheap, like a set of axles and a spool from Strange is like 600 bucks, 650 bucks, something like that. Um, so for roughly, you know, 11, 1200 bucks, somewhere around there, he can have a pretty stout rear end, um, that would also have disc brakes on it, which I mean, it's a pickup truck. You don't really need disc brakes, but might help, might work a little better for him. Um, but I mean. All right, I'm going to add this in. Quick little PS. I actually um, went back through everything and found a couple of things that I kind of missed, forgotten. So I went ahead and I welded the two tabs to the radiator, both sides, and then I cut the two lips that were standing up that were just annoying. Like if you leaned on it, you'd about cut your arm open on those little lips and they were flimsy and floppy. And then I added just some little pieces of angle iron they're not the greatest nicest things but they work um, and then I moved the recovery tank it was bolted over here to these two holes so I moved it to over there and then put a little piece of power steering hose on it so that's all done now it's done the radiator can't kick back into the power steering pulley um, it's got enough clearance can't really see it because oh, there we go it's got enough clearance you can see it was rubbing before but I pushed it over pushed it back now it's got enough clearance it's good to go um, also the relay I did did, did a mistake in the video I, yesterday or the day before or whatever it was the nitrous relay wasn't triggering um, and I literally forgot to wire the ground which would be like in a relay it would be pin 30 it would be your battery positive um, and that's what you feed your source with but in this case I reversed the relay so I was feeding in a ground to feed out a ground to the holly so I found the wire hooked it to a good ground that works now in the software I, I made sure it works in the software I already disconnected everything and 
just had to, I was playing with the truck on the phone with Jeff. Um, so everything's back together. The dash is back together. I think he's coming tomorrow. I think he's going to pop in tomorrow. We're going to pull the dash out. He's going to bring the paint. We're going to get it all cleaned up real good. Get it painted. Set it back in there. Uh, get it all bolted back in. And it'll be ready to go. So just a little filler to put in between here and there. It's done. Um, next time we'll see this truck, it will be all blue. And hopefully at the track. <laughs> That's it on Jeff's Spaghetti S10, Smallbox Chevy S10, every name I named, every video. Um, appreciate you watching. Do me a favor, hit the thumbs up. Hit the subscribe, hit the bell to be notified of the new videos I post. I try and post as many as I can, um, but I appreciate you watching. Have a good day.